Good morning, everyone. Tony Maritato here. In this module, I wanted to share a demo on how I create what we call an OTC tracker. OTC stands for over the counter. It's a way for us to generate uh, patient invoices, basically, separate from our patient accounting software. I'm going to show you how I go in and find the Medicare fee schedule for your state, grab the Medicare allowed amounts for 2019, put in the either 100%, 20%, put in any percent coinsurance uh, so that it calculates out, let's say an example would be a patient who has Medicare as a primary insurer, uh, Part B benefits, but no secondary coverage. So the patient's going to be responsible for 20% of the allowed amount. And we'll talk about some of the other reductions that you're not going to necessarily know ahead of time unless you've already been billing Medicare, but that you can roughly estimate uh, and why I believe invoicing the patient is a horrible thing to do after therapy relative to issuing a refund. So let's get into this demo. I'll show you how to do it. I'll show you the mechanics. This is something we cover in the Medicare billing course. Um, let's just start here. And anybody who's taken the Medicare billing course has access to this uh, file for free. It's included in the course. So we go to CMS Physician Fee Schedule Lookup. Just Google it. Within these first couple search results, you'll find it. If I click on the Lookup tool, it takes me to CMS. I'm looking for this Physician Fee Schedule Lookup tool. I come down, I start my search. I come down, I accept their terms. And so this is the first time now I'm seeing the 2019 fee schedule being published. Uh, a couple weeks ago, it was still left at 2018. We want pricing information. We want, I usually do a list. You can do a range, but whatever kind of works best for you. I'm gonna do a list here. And I'm gonna choose um, by locality. This could be state, this could be a, a subsection of the state, but I'll show you what I mean. Before I put in my C, CPT code, so these are the ones that I already have. So these are the ones that I'm missing that I'm showing you how to look up. So 116124, uh, let's get in here, 97116, 97124, see what else I need. I need 150 and 535. Okay, you are going to choose all modifiers, and this is where you're gonna find your locale, right? And this is what I was saying, like San Francisco is broken up into different sections. Um, on this particular one, we're doing North Dakota, Here we go. I click submit. And so this is what we've got. We've got our CPT codes. We've got, you don't need the MAC locality, but you've got the non-facility, facility, the limiting charge. We're not gonna get into a discussion of what all this information is right now. Suffice it to say, this is what we're looking for right here. And so I'm just gonna, Grab these numbers, 30, 66. I'm gonna put them in here, and then I'll show you how this tool works. 2903, 1857, uh, 3463. Okay, so taking a look at this Google Sheet, you see here, these are the CPT codes. Obviously, I need to put in descriptions. Uh, these are the Medicare allowed amount. And so a, a brief explanation of how this works. So let's say your charge is $50 for a unit of therapeutic exercise. You charge 50, 
Medicare allowed amount is 31. So the contract adjustment is the difference between your charge minus the Medicare allowed amount. So that $18.98 gets, you can call it an adjustment, a reduction, a discount, um, but basically the Medicare beneficiary is solely responsible for the 3102. And then Medicare essentially, so I'm just gonna say Medicare is responsible for 80%, right? So I'm gonna say, that times 0.8, whoops, yeah. And then either the patient or the secondary is responsible for the remaining balance. So the 20%, this $6.20 either goes to the patient if they don't have a secondary goes to the secondary coverage or any other insurance policy that's in place. It gets processed. Maybe there's still a patient remainder, a patient responsibility. Maybe there's not. But I just want you to kind of see the, the track. Now, one of the things that's not represented in this demo that we go into detail in the course, there isn't a discount for the MPPR in here, the multiple procedure reduction. There's no sequestration. There's no other penalties that might be in place. Um, so there's multiple percentages that are going to further reduce the 3102. But for this basic demo, we're not going to get into all that. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this, take you back into the main idea here. And what I've done over here on this side of the screen, the left, is I created some typical billing scenarios, right? And, and so like for me in my practice, uh, a very common first time the patient comes to the clinic, we're gonna do a physical therapy evaluation. Now keep in mind, this has come up a couple of times. For 2019, the evaluation CPT code, whether it's 97161, 162, 163, they're still all reimbursing at the same rate um, which I've got this mixed up. So let's switch this around. So Medicare price, and, and I'll show you how I make the formulas. Uh, the Medicare price equals, oh, I know why, because I, I arrange these, um, uh, I arrange these numerically just to make it easier to find, but I didn't correct my, formulas over here. So basically what I did is I come in, so this is a therapeutic exercise, right? So I take this, uh, I go ahead and I say equals, I find therapeutic exercise, I click on that, times, I click on the number of units, and I hit enter. And so it gives me two units of therapeutic exercises, 6204. I do the same thing for manual therapy, equals, come over here, click on that cell, times, click on the number of unit cell, hit equal. This one, uh, I really should do the same thing. So equals, even though the eval is only ever one unit, just to keep the formulas consistent, I'll kind of do the same thing. I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna update the rest of these formulas in the Medicare pricing column, and then I'll bring you back on. Okay, welcome back. So I updated all of these formulas, and now what you will see is, for example, um, therapeutic exercise, two units, totals 6204. If the patient, for example, had not met their Medicare deductible, first day of the year, hasn't been anywhere else, does not have a secondary plan or any other coverage to reimburse, the patient would be responsible for 100% of the Medicare allowed amount up to the 2019 Medicare deductible, which is $185. Um, now let's take a different scenario and let's say the patient has met their deductible, but they 
uh, do not have a secondary. So I change my percentages to 20%. And so here we can see now all of a sudden the amount switched from 100% to 20% of the allowed amount. And so the reason why this is important and the way this is going to work is let's say for example, and we're gonna use an extreme case here. We're gonna say, okay, this patient has not met their Medicare deductible and it's January 1st. I'm seeing them for an initial evaluation. I do two units of exercise, one unit of manual therapy. I click and highlight this sample claim. I hit control C to copy. I come over to my blank invoice. Now this is where you can put in your company logo, your company information, uh, patient information in here. But basically what I do is I right click, I'm using a PC, it's a little bit different on Mac, but the same basic idea. I come down to paste special, and I only wanna paste the values. I can hit control shift V, but I wanted to show you what it looks like, so I click paste values only. Remember, this is at 100%, there's no secondary, and the, the Medicare deductible has not been met. And so I can see down here, okay, the patient owes me $176 and one cent. Uh, I'm still under the deductible, but this is what the patient would pay. And then, you know, so I, I said this was uh, date of service 1119, right? And then let's say I see the patient, they make a payment, check number 123, and they pay me the full allowed amount which we know will get credited toward their deductible. Okay, now the patient is coming in for treatment number two. And let's say um, the patient does not have a secondary still. So I come back into my fee schedule and on the second treatment, I decide that I'm gonna do a combo of uh, therapeutic exercise and therapeutic activity. And so within this, I know that they haven't met their Medicare deductible yet, for, but for the four or $9, I'm away from it. I'm just gonna keep this super simple. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say, okay, this now is 20%. Let's say that it was, three exercise, one activity. I'm gonna grab this, control C to copy. I'm gonna come in here. Remember, it's special paste, values only. I'm gonna throw that in there. And we're gonna say this was date of service uh, the fifth. Okay, so at this point, Right, we've got to take into consideration um, there's the Medicare deductible, and then we're gonna have the patient payment. And so there's a couple ways you can handle this. It gets a little bit co complicated because they're gonna be paying 100% of the allowed amount for the $9 or $8.99 that takes them to the Medicare deductible. Then they're gonna be paying 20% of the allowed amount for the remainder. Keep in mind, there are those additional reductions associated with the multiple procedure reduction, the, the sequestration reduction, possibly other reductions in there. So this is still not gonna be an exact science, but basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna say Medicare deductible, I can, if I wanna be, I can say estimate, that we estimated it to be met. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna apply the patient payment of negative 2669. So now the patient balance is zero again. The patient paid me, we'll say they paid, credit card this time, right? Um, we're gonna say that they came in there. 
And so now what's going to happen is we are going to most likely have over collected because of those other reductions. Okay. Let's say that we submit, you know, we submit these claims within 24 hours. And now we're looking at patient comes back, date of service, uh, 112 or 111, 19. And let's say by this time, we have a Medicare electronic remit that's already come back and shows us the true exact values after the reductions. So what I would do here is I would say Medicare credit from EOB. And then I can come in here and I can say, you know, after the sequestration and, and uh, multiple procedure reductions, let's say the patient has a $32 credit. So now we owe the patient $32. So on their next date of service, let's say we end up coming back here and we do like a two and two. We're still saying there is no secondary, no other insurance plans in place. So I come back in here and this is gonna be 115, 19. I right click, special paste, values only. And you can see how that's coming off the credit. And then down the road, so we're gonna say, you know, one, 2419, I get another Medicare credit of $12.23. The credits on this invoice always have to be negative. And so we just have this back and forth tally that's going on. And so, you know, by the last date of service, as those EOBs are coming in from Medicare, and we're recalculating and, and applying the exact reductions from those EOBs, by the last date of service, you have a pretty good idea what that patient's gonna actually owe. And my personal philosophy is, and I'm gonna stop sharing for just a minute, think about this from a patient experience. You know, Jerry Durham is all about mapping the patient experience, and I agree with him 100%. If you haven't talked to him, heard from him, go out there and find him. He does an amazing job with what he teaches. But the idea is there is a huge difference, a huge difference in getting an invoice for $32 three months after you've been discharged from therapy, or getting a refund for $32 the day you finish physical therapy, okay? So getting a refund is always gonna leave a better taste in your mouth. From, from marketing and sales research, we know that the client is always more happy to pay at the time of service. I say even before the service is delivered because once they write that check, you pretty well know what you're gonna do for that date of service. You know what treatment you are gonna provide. Let's say you're planning on doing 2X and 2 activity and the patient comes in just super acute and, and other pathology and you change it to 2 manual and 2, two exercise. So let's take a look at what the price difference on something that, like that would be. So 2 um, exercise, 2 activity, we're looking at about 20, uh, 18, 19 bucks, right? If I'm looking at two exercise, uh, let's just take this section right here. And we're gonna say two and two uh, for massage and exercise. I'm looking at basically the same thing. You know, it's, it's gonna be a little bit less. What, four bucks less, 350 less. Um, it, it's a nominal difference for a full treatment. And that's where I'm saying, you know, okay, so we have a little bit of leeway as credits and debits kind of roll in. But even if you change your treatment at the last minute and you update your invoice, the idea is you have a pretty good idea and the patient has a pretty good idea of what they're gonna owe. You can certainly make it much more accurate. 
as those uh, reductions come in and you see them on the EOB, I will typically take a treatment like this and just put in my reductions once I have them from Medicare for the new calendar year. And then I know to the penny exactly what it is when I build this exact treatment. You know, if I change my treatment, I need to manipulate it a little bit. But the idea is this is a tool that will help you and help your patient know within a reasonable margin of error exactly what they're going to owe on every visit. And so you can see here, you know, like this is, these are fake patients, but basically what you do is you create your invoice for a specific patient. You come in here, you click duplicate, you come out here, you name the invoice for the patient. So um, Jones B, this is a fake patient. I usually will put in like dates of service. So maybe I'm treating this patient starting on 119. I don't have a discharge yet, so I just leave it open-ended. But this is another way that you can start to kind of create a library of these invoices. And as long as you're using the professional G Suites, the, the business plan, and you have a BAA in place, you remain HIPAA compliant. But I can tell you that patients just really appreciate knowing exactly what they're going to owe and paying at the time of service. I hope this video was helpful. I'm going to share it out onto the public forum. Uh, as I mentioned before, you know, this is, these are the kinds of tools that just make life easier. Can you pull this information from your patient accounting software? Yeah, a hundred percent. You as the business owner have the freedom to say, you know what? I don't want to do that. I want to let the claim process. And then when the Medicare EOB comes in, I'm going to bill the patient exactly what the Medicare statement says. No problem. Like the best part about being a business owner is you get to make those decisions. You get to craft the patient experience. You get to control what the patient uh, either likes, doesn't like, enjoys, hates, you know, and so these are, these are the creative aspects of being an entrepreneur. My background's fine arts. I love the creative aspect of building a business. That's just what drives me every single day. That's why I'm in this 18 going on 19 years and just as passionate today as I was in the beginning. So I went way longer than I expected. Sorry about that, guys. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. I'll share this on YouTube. Check out our Facebook uh, page and our Facebook group, Medicare Billing for Mostly Cash-Based Physical Therapists. And I will see you on the other side. Thanks for watching.